I'm going to take a photo with a camera. Yes, go ahead. I'm going I to take a to record. Yes. Sorry. Yeah. I'm go going ahead. to take a picture with a little light red or pink tinge, and at an angle of 30 degrees. So you can't really see the images very well. So when I got the foramens, uh, the foramen I had a skull base. Foramen, no, skull base means the uh, superior aspect. Um, they asked me, so there's a picture of the tintor cerebellum, uh, but it's taken in such a stupid angle, you will know it how it is. But I had another one, which was actually the popliteal fossa. Now, popliteal fossa is actually a very easy station, but I was struggling to find out what is lateral and medial to tell him what is the common perineal nerve. And there were some stupid nerves hanging from the other side also. So I was like, what the bloody hell? So anatomy, but you know, then I brought this up during the, um, after you finish, you have a feedback session. So when I brought it up, I, they said, oh, I, I, th I don't accept that explanation. They said, oh, it's going to be tough for everyone. So it, it weighs out. No. Um, so just mentally, whoever's writing an exam, anatomy, yes, you may think when I, when people told me it's a difficult picture, it's actually, you. it's not that you don't know the anatomy. So my friend had a, a picture of the heart and he was not this time, the previous time. Uh, and he said, Jeet, I couldn't even, what angle is this exactly? I had the same problem with the thorax. I was like, what the bloody hell is this structure? We know where all the record knowledge of turns, blah, blah, blah. We know all that. It is a little, so just be mentally prepared. Don't worry. So the college told me that it's tough for everyone. Um, okay, I agree. But yeah, so you know, I was hoping and banking on anatomy you know, as a bit of a strong point to compensate. But it didn't, I think it didn't work to that much of a favor. So, but don't be disheartened because it's going to be tough for everyone. So anatomy is not like the McMinn pictures anymore. It's changed. It's a little silly kind of pictures because I think they know everyone knows the kind of question. So they make it a bit more tough. So, okay, I'm going to stop, Dr. Arthik. I've talked too much. So I want to wish everyone, if I can do it as an old goat, all of you can pass. Trust me. No, no. Yes, you are very, very good. Like in the mocks, in the courses as well, you were fantastic of going through everything. Try to know the basics, the concepts. Like wherever I start, I I always say to the uh, candidates, like this this exam is all about communication. Okay, if you can, if you cannot yes. communicate well, that means you are not going to yes. pass this, right? You have to communicate. So. It's your chance. Like I am giving you the platform. Why you are not talking, right? So if no, you no. cannot so, talk like, here. Even yeah. So empathy. Empathy is so important in this exam. Like for example, uh, I will tell you one of my colleagues who wrote the exam uh, not this time, the last time again. Um, you know when he was putting the catheter on the mannequin, the patient said, "Ah, okay." He said. Uh, so in India, we say, oh, just give me a little more time. I'll finish in 30 seconds. No, no way. The moment the patient shows a bit of concern, immediately stop, apologize, uh, take their permission, make them comfortable. You know, it's, it's, it's a bit of a, like, you know, you know, it's, it's drama between the candidate and the, and, the, and, the, uh, actor, and the actor. So, you know, these are very important things. Pain is something that these people cannot tolerate at all. And I mean, this, this cannot accept you to sort of keep going on. You need to take their permission. So it's, uh, yeah. and Dr. Atik will tell all you guys how to do that. You don't have to worry about that. It's going to be absolutely fine. Follow this course, try and join the crush courses and uh, get the get get access to those drives and you guys will fly through. Trust me, if I can get through, anyone can get through. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, Dr. Doctor, Z. Doctor. Thank you, thank you so much uh, for your experiences. <laughs> yeah. it, it really means a lot Amazing. for for me and also Please. for the new candidates as yeah, well. I mean, you you deserve it. You've put in so much effort, Dr. Isra or Sattar. There's so many other people who put so much of effort in this. And uh, I need to talk to Dr. Isra once before, you know, uh, you know, I want to tell her also. You know, yeah, definitely it's okay. Definitely I, will, it's, I, will, uh, I will tell her as well, yeah. Yeah, please. Thank, thank you. Thank okay, you so I, will much. Just, I will stop talking. Thank you. Thank yes, you. thank you, Dr. Zid. Excellent. Okay, uh, we have Dr. Aman Kawa, and uh, he was like one of the finest students. And I think, uh, like, uh, if I'm not wrong, maybe, and uh, all of you can correct me, I didn't see any any score uh, higher than him till now. Uh, maybe um, Dr. Aman Kawa can say. Dr. Aman Kawa, can you unmute Dr. yourself? I think I sent you my score. I, yes, I, 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 I saw your score. Yes, what was the total score, Doctor Zeet? You had is that a is that a total score for that? Uh, so my yes. total was uh, one sixty five. 
uh, in uh, as a whole as a whole how as a whole as a whole yeah so my knowledge was 120 and the pass mark required was 113 so i and in the scale very well with knowledge in skill the scale was a uh, pass mark was skill was 118 was the required mm -hmm. pass mark i got 145 so as a, in total both of with both of them how so, much is it so uh, in total it would be 165 no, 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 and no. The no. pass mark was sorry, 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 sorry. Two sixty five, two sixty five. Sorry. That yes. So, so, so two sixty five is very high mark, very high mark. Like, is it? Like, yes, oh, yes. Like, yeah, last, last time, last time, like uh, from my group, uh, there was a stopper in UK Center. He got like two hundred and seventy one, and that was the highest mark. Okay. Okay, and that was okay. that was from our group. Okay, and inshallah, I'm hoping okay. this time as well. Yeah. Okay, maybe maybe yes. uh, Dr. Amonko got that highest mark from our group as well. Okay, and he will say. I hope Dr. so. I hope. Yes, and you were yeah. Amonko very close. Okay, Dr. Amonko. Oh, yes. Thank Welcome. you, Dr. Welcome. You introduce yourself and please share your right. experience with uh, all, of, all of the candidates. Okay, my name is Dr. Amonko. I'm from Ghana. Um, I took the exam in February at London Center. And... Um, I joined Dr. Atik's program uh, somewhere after the beginning, maybe a few weeks after the beginning, and uh, I've been with him to the time I wrote the exam. Well, it's, it's been a very um, interesting experience. Honestly, when I started preparing for the exam, I didn't know where to start from. I didn't even know what materials to use. So coming across this group changed everything for me in terms of the preparation. And uh, the crash course actually came in handy because it kind of, you know, put everything together in one place. So I didn't have to go searching from different sources uh, before I, I got what I wanted. So thanks to Dr. Tick, Esra, the whole team. It's been very, very, very wonderful, the kind of work you guys put in to get it uh, to that level. So I most appreciate it. In fact, I made the exam quite easy for me. I wouldn't say the exam was easy, but because of the kind of um, information you gave us, how you took us through the mock, it was a very good dress re rehearsal we had. And uh, I'll say it made all the difference because I have taken um, OSCEs before, but this OSCE is, I mean, way different from uh, whatever I've done in the past. So to get this level of coaching made it much, much easier. So yes, um, I think you deserve all the credit. Uh, for the exam itself, um, well, <laughs> I'll say that the skill part, maybe most people would say that's where the challenge is. For me, yes, it was. Not that it was difficult, but it, it's, it's a performance stage. So you have to overcome that stage fright to be able to go through it in your mind, go through the steps and get everything right. Um, when I started, I had a pathology station, uh, that was a TB station, but before I could enter that station, directly opposite me was the, <laughs> the crisp station of the anastomotic leg. And, you know, I was a bit thrown off when I saw that, you know, that station. So when I went into the TB station, I, in my, the back of my mind, that was playing like, that's my next station. And it, <laughs> it was quite an interesting experience, but um again when you enter that station you may just have to go back to first principles it's a little for me that was the most challenging station i should tell you i though we know what to do when you are confronted with it in the exam you have to think on your feet because the instruction is written on the door it is, yeah, you've been called to see this patient blah, blah, blah. and you go in and the guy is lying there with the addressing it on his abdomen he has stair stockings on. He uh, has an oxygen mask on. The examiner is sitting by him on his table. There are a number of chats. So did you start it? Did you start it with the swinging movement, Dr. Amankoa? <laughs> yeah, I did. I did all that. <laughs> but I mean, there was nothing by the, the patient. So the patient was placed by the wall. So you could only look around on the left side. And when you swing around, you realize that he just got his dresses and things that wrong. There was no oxygen cylinder, I couldn't see it. But the charts were on the table where the examiner was facing you. So you, when you finish examining, 
you go and sit directly opposite the examiner with a the chat there. So you are tempted to say you want to go and look at the chat, but when you do that, the examiner tells you that you finish what you are doing, we'll get to that. You get it. So in your mind, you have to be, be smart about what you're doing. And that station, I, I'm talking about it because I really want to see what my marks were. I didn't know exactly what I was doing because I started with an abdominal examination. The guy jumped like, yo, he was in pain. So I had to quickly stop, move on to um, the chest. So during during that process, I think the six minutes came up. At least I was able to examine the, the chest and all that. So I had to present my findings. And when I was presenting the findings, the examiner asked me, <laughs> what was the the maximum area of tenderness? Now, the question is, I couldn't fully examine the abdomen. So the, do you answer and say it's in the left area for sir? However, what saved me was that I asked the patient, are you in pain? He said, yes, where is the pain? So he pointed there. So I told the patient, yeah, I told the examiner that, I mean, the abdomen was extremely tender. I couldn't uh, elicit, I couldn't complete the abdominal examination, but from the patient's account, is the, the pain is most marked in the left eye fossa. And yeah, so I went on. He asked me other questions. We went through and then went through the charts and all that. I'm just talking about this station because, I mean, you're used to doing normal, uh, straightforward abdominal examinations without uh, being interrupted and then to jump to another system and be able to focus on that system and, you know, get a, a sequence in your head. So you have to quickly move through that in your head. I mean, for me, those were the, the issues. The other stations, um, obviously, uh, the from the, uh, what do you call it, from the crisp station, I went to, I think it was a catheter, male catheter. Again, that was another challenge because after I completed it, inserting the catheter to the Y, I was about to instill the balloon. So, you know, I, I, I go to the Y and then the, the examiner said, you have inserted the catheter fully, but there's no urine flowing. So what would he do? And he was handing me the, the flash. I mean, the, the, the sea line, I mean, the, yeah, the, the water to instill into the balloon. So I told him, no, I would, first of all, Pekas, do all the things you do, Pekas, uh, put some super uh, uh, pressure, aspirate. I said all that. He said, there's still no urine coming. So I was like, okay. I mean, at this point, I don't think I can instill the, uh, the fluid into the balloon because I cannot be certain I'm in the blood. I'll have to see urine. So in, in, in he didn't, I mean, push me any further though. Then he asked me some other questions. So the question is, was I right in not instilling the fluid in the bladder? You know, the, the, in your mind, you're wondering, I didn't complete the procedure, but there's a specific instruction given to you. There's no urine coming. Do you still go ahead and instill the, the, the saline into the, the catheter, I mean, the balloon? And the picture, the, the examiner is handing it to you. <laughs> you can imagine. So yeah, that was, that was a challenge for me at that station. Otherwise, everything else there was not too much of a challenge. We all do catheters every day. So you just go through the, uh, the same, uh, uh, what do you call it, procedure. The cat C when you go in. <clears throat> the good thing is in the London station, before you enter, they give you an apron to wear. And when you get there, they put the set down. Everything is ready. They tell you that the glove you're wearing is sterile. So you don't need to change. If you want to change, they'll tell you continue, consider it sterile, continue. So that you save time, so you're able to do the procedure to the end. Then you take your questions. Uh, the other one was the nervous excision. That one went quite straightforward. I mean, nothing peculiar. And you are not asked any questions by the examiner. The questions are asked by the patient. That's the interesting part. And you have to continue talking. What I did was, once the patient starts asking you the questions, you answer them. And then you also add your instructions, post up instruction, because the, that station, once the time is over, that's it. You don't get to ask for anything. They won't ask you any other questions. So all the things you want to say at the end, try and be saying them whilst you're doing the procedure. So that's 
what I I thought because I was in my mind I was thinking why are they not minding me? The examiner is standing somewhere just observing what I'm doing. There's no interaction between me and the examiner, and it's just the candidate. So I realized that no, if I have to wait till the end, maybe I may, I may not even say the things I need to say. So I had to continue saying them and. Luckily, I was able to complete that station just in time. The time I put my last uh, suture, then the, the, you know, the time went up. So that went, went quite well. The other one was a ankle examination. It's a straightforward one. And uh, I think the other stations, knowledge and the crisps, everything we were taught in this course, everything came the same way. Uh, that one, I wouldn't like about it. The anatomy the pathology the crisp the questions the sequence of the way the questions are everything is in that order so yours is just to go through the material you're given just go through it i think that's for me that's all i can tell those who are coming in fresh just go through the material as many times as you can you don't even need to read anything else once you go through all the stations here that is what you're going to get in the exam there's nothing different about it Surprisingly, the anatomy for me, I found it easy because I like the anatomy. But again, it's quite straightforward in terms of the the things they ask you. You 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 are supposed to give one word answers, just straightforward. This that by the time you realize you would have finished, and there's three minutes more, you are sitting there. Examiner is also looking somewhere else. <laughs> it was a bit awkward anyway, but. That's how yes. all that finishing yeah. finishing I mean, the yeah. station before your time it's really awkward like yeah. you know very, very awkward. Will not all, say the, anything. all the anatomy yes. were like that. and also so, also you're not able to talk okay that that, no. that time it's very awkward right and I knew like yeah. I knew yeah. Dr. Amanka I said to you remember when you are um, yeah. going for the mocks I said like you are going to blast in the anatomy because yeah. you were you were so good in anatomy as well remember yeah. so so i i knew it <laughs> from all of you like, inshallah very good excellent so, job yeah. so what 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 Thank was the, what was your score i had 268 excellent yes dr zip your score is 265 and amon cause is yes <laughs> yeah so both yeah, of you so... did a fantastic job okay and i think like i didn't see <laughs> any score more than 268 okay Till now, so I think I'm guessing Namanko is the oh, topper, sorry. maybe. I don't know. I think I should. Yeah, but I, I, I don't know. But then, uh, the only thing is, Namanko is not 50 years old. So <laughs> no, no, you no, no, point. Yeah, that. that's it. Yes, you're correct. That's it. I'm not that young either. <laughs> okay, you. I, <laughs> okay, but still, no, and I. Okay, so. I think one quick question when this was being talked about. So ankle examination, I also had. Now, when you have, and the, in the history, the stem is basically a patient has had trauma uh, after playing a football game. So you know it's either ligamentous or uh, fracture, right? Now, in that kind of scenario, do you actually ask the patient to walk on his heels and toes and all that? Or is that more, do you have to sort of play the game? And because I didn't do it, I decided because because it's already told to me that this is going to happen. I decided to just ask him to walk and then I stopped. Now, I don't know whether I pulled, I lost some marks because of that. Because normally what they say is, you know, you have to make them stand. Now, practically speaking, if you have a fracture, you're not going to ask the patient to walk on his heels and toes. He must be in so <clears> much pain, right? Dr. Zit, you don't know, yeah. you don't know exactly yeah. what is the diagnosis until yeah. you do the examination, right? Yeah. yeah. So that's why yeah. you need to ask, yeah. you need to ask to walk the patient because in the background yeah. you know maybe the yeah. patient is having yeah. a fracture or maybe some sort of injury to the ligament that's why yes. in, in background yeah. of your brain you're thinking i already brain, know yeah. it but but you have to act yes. right you have to act that i don't yes. know anything yes exactly exactly okay. so you, you're saying just go ahead and ask them or ask them yes. are you comfortable to walk yes. on your toes yes. are you okay if i ask you to walk on your heels you know just for completion just for just yes. to know you know yes. maybe just be polite about it ask them and they say oh yeah. no i can't and then just leave it um, isn't it yeah the, i think that makes sense i, I think i yeah. i share your your opinion on this i i had the same thought in my head do i ask you yes to or not but what yes. Yes. what made it easier for me was that the actor was so good that 
the moment I I suggested he he wanted to do it, I realized it's something he he had to do. Yes, yes. Remember, ah, remember uh -huh. in the mocks, big... in the mocks, in the yes, course, I, I say that... the the patient yes. will guide you through it, yeah, very, right? Yes. In the clinical yes. exams, yes, exactly. they will guide you. Yes. Like yes. they will start doing yes. something. Yes. Okay. Like yeah. uh, yes. they're they're yeah. hoping that you are going to tell them to walk, and they yeah, already are standing in, 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 in standing exactly. position. I didn't get that option. Yeah. I didn't get that that option. He immediately is just complaining of mm -hmm. pain, blah 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 blah, and then you know he just uh, I said okay, please lie down, let me start. And then each time you, I was twisting his ankle and breaking it and all. He was like, ah oh, ah oh, ah, oh, so sorry, sorry, <laughs> just keep on apologizing. Yes. It's a drama, like you said, no, no, yes, I'm, complete drama acting. And the, yes, so. complete acting. Yeah. Yes, the more you can act, the more yeah. the mark you are going to have. <laughs> yeah. So um, in my. In my clinical mark station, I, mean, I was just looking at it right now, the clinical and procedural skills. So clinics is exam exactly the uh, three clinics that we have, clinical examinations we have and the procedures. So in that out of 100, it's, it's like five stations, so 100 marks. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to tell you, I'm going to tell you only the good marks. The bad marks, I won't tell you. So the good marks were out of 100 for that, uh, all those five stations, I got 92. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And that is what, Excellent. That is what pulled... Mm -hmm. That is what pulled me up and I'm still confused that, you know, in, in certain places, I got lower than the normal average, like communication. I was like, shit, I would have communicated. But <laughs> at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. Yeah. You bloody have, you know, you just, you just need to pass. No one wants a gold medal. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. And that's, that's everyone yeah, wants. That's Nothing else. Yeah, yes. exactly. But yeah. both of you did a fantastic job and I'm liking, liking your smile. Dr. Z, because because before the exam, <laughs> you, you, were, you were completely stressed out. I was not smiling. Oh, I think yeah, you have you were no idea smiling. the stress I've gone through. I know. Two years of this kind of torture. I know, I know. You can imagine. You know my story, right? Yeah, it's I like know, I know. Yes. Yeah, anyway. yes. But, yeah, but these guys, oh. definitely, whoever listening, you guys can crack it. Trust you, you follow yeah. this Dr. Atik's training and you guys will smash it. Trust me, if I can yeah. do it at this age, you guys can definitely do it. I'm expecting yeah. like the only, I, I had only one month for you guys, remember, in the crash course. Yes. And with yes. one month, yes, if yes. you can be the topper in the like UK exam, <laughs> then what, what the candidates will do after the three months of course? <laughs> can you imagine that? Yeah. They, will, they, they, will, they, they will get much higher scores than me. Inshallah. So I, I'm, I'm hoping that. Issue. Yes, I'm hoping that. I hope, Inshallah. I hope. And, and, and Dr. Adik, please, if um, I will be slowly winding out of the group, not because of anything else, but I will send my number if anybody mm -hmm. wants to talk to me about yes, anything, yes. if anyone needs any particular notes. I know mm -hmm. that there are certain notes I'm not allowed to, uh, we're not allowed to put, but if anyone needs personal notes, please just uh, text me, guys. If you yes. need anything from my side, um, I'm happy to provide notes. Yeah. Yes, just just um just make a post into the group okay uh, if anyone needs you yeah. needs your help they can just simply text you no 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 problem like, like come on this is this is a family i'm not like some <laughs> other persons right it's not a no no no, like no because group, i had right? i had put some everyone has no, access I put some notes earlier but i had put some notes earlier but i think they are no longer there because of you know i think some issues whatever it is so if yes. anybody wants to contact me anything please yes. feel free yes. to just yes. directly send me a text I will put my yes. number because I don't know if I if I, I will definitely be coming out of the group from now on. But I will mm -hmm. have my number there. Uh, if anybody wants it, please feel free to call me. I am jobless at the moment. You can call me anytime. <laughs> or text me anytime. So and for, the, for the next few months, so I'm fine. And yeah. doctor, uh, doctor, are you from Nigeria? I'm from Ghana. Ghana. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you. I'm asking because I'm from Nigeria. So that's. Oh, you're from Nigeria. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Sorry, guys. Keep continuing. Sorry. That's right. Thank you. No, no, no issues. Thank you. Thank you so much. So oh, I just wanted to mention one thing. I remember. I just remember the uh, communication station. The patient. It was uh, the wife of uh, a patient with uh, malignant ascites. Faulty CT scan machine. Yes, exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. So, uh, usual acting where you enter the the lady is standing <laughs> up, pacing about. Completely acting. <laughs> it's a complete acting. She's just pacing please, about. One so, one thing, Doctor Amanka, must... for the for the new candidates, I want to say, please don't laugh out because of the acting yeah. from the patient side. Please, okay. Yeah. You, you might be still laughing have out. To be very serious. Yes, yeah. and one <laughs> you, thing. You, 
to right. have to have two examiners. Well, I had the same station of Ramakot. I had two right. examiners sitting there, being absolutely expressionless, yeah. looking at you. And then yeah. I asked her, uh, "Do you want a tissue?" Then she said, "No, no, I've already got a tissue." You know, mm -hmm. in the angry exactly. voice. You know. Yeah. So, so, so don't don't. You must you must remember upset. to make her sit down before you start. Yes. Yes. And then oh, maybe you can even ask permission. Do you mind me sitting down? It's all a drama. Yeah. And yeah. then she'll say, of course, because Usually, the chair is there for you to sit down, you know? So, yeah. yeah. Once she sits down, then you can also take a seat. But you don't go and sit down before you start. Yeah. Talking. How many, how many times, how many times I, I get you guys remember that? Like, you cannot start the station yeah. if the patient Without is it. not in sitting position. Because exactly. maybe, maybe Perfect. if you finish your station while standing, that means you are going to, like, have failed in that exam. Okay, yeah. so that's yes. very important yes. as well. Yes, Dr. Manga, please continue. Right, so that's one other thing I remember. Then also, I think uh, I should mention this. Um, in the history station, the ice is very important. Ideas, consent, expectation. I noticed this because uh, when I uh, got, the patient I got was the tonsillar swelling. When I got to ice, the moment I asked the patient, so what are your concerns? What are you worried about? And he gave me the answer. The examiner literally leaned over to hear what I'll say in response to that. There were two examiners there. So I think one of them was uh, assessing your communication. So don't take the eyes. Don't ever forget. Dr. Amanko, was, was there anyone? Was there anyone from um, Asian? Oh, yeah, there were, yeah. You mean the, 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 the examiner who was leaning forward to you was was he was uh, Asian? Um, I don't remember what that was. Mostly, Asian. mostly the Asian examiners <laughs> do that. Okay, <laughs> yeah. comes he and lean forward to, to you, exactly and he was to hear everything. Saying. Yes, yeah. Yeah. yes, so, I think very but, true because but so I had about interesting... seven examiners who were from Asia, seven or eight yeah. examiners who out of seventeen. Yes. And, uh, and and people who think that there is a certain amount of racial discrimination, no, I, no, I really don't think so, in my honest opinion, not because I passed. It's just basically how you present yourself and, you know, the way you dress and, you know, dress code, Dr. Atik has already mentioned, please don't wear jeans and t-shirt and rubbish mm -hmm. like that, please, guys. Girls can wear, you know, I think girls are very lucky, in the, the you know. Fan, they they can wear fancy dresses, yes. Wear, yes. Yes. <laughs> and they will get away with it. We can't. What? Guys, don't know sneakers, yeah, shoes. Yeah. Even try to avoid suede shoes. Try mm -hmm. to use normal leather shoes. I mean, we all, come on. We don't wear, you know, fa uh, you know sneakers when you go to clinics, right? Practically speaking. So just wear shoes, a normal pant, a normal shirt, uh, you know, above the elbows if it's full sleeves uh, and no tie. Um, yeah. um, with regard to uh, stethoscope, I will... I can just, this is my opinion. Um, if you have, if you are used to a stethoscope, I had to borrow my wife's, but if you are used to a stethoscope, yeah, I think I'm you not working. Yours. You should take yours. Yeah, just better. take your own. You know why? Because you'll you're be used more to that. Organized. You'll be more organized. Yeah. So, yeah. Because the other one might not that you turn the bell, turn it here, you're wasting time. Take yeah, your yeah. step if yeah. you can. I think this is just my opinion. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, that's it. You um, should you should take you, one uh, you I should take one stethoscope okay. because why you know guys because you're not allowed to take anything right and when you are starting the station or something like you are standing alone you you will mm. you will start fidgeting right so you need something to do some fidgeting so you can use that <laughs> stethoscope to do something at least okay so uh, that is yeah, a good idea to take that as well yeah yeah, yeah. well secondly, one other, the, the one, royal college one, uh, in edinburgh allows yeah. you to take normal watches. Now, a lot of people have said in the post that you can't take watches. I don't know how it works in other centers. So just be <clears throat> mentally prepared. For just the Indian centers, said, you're not allowed to take that as well. Yeah. Okay. One so here, you're allowed to. One observation I made, actually, surprisingly, the examiners were actually very nice. Um, I was I mean, surprised to find out that. In fact, my very first station, which was the pathology uh, station uh, when I gave my answer I was saying tuberculosis and the man kept asking yes uh, how, how else would you say it and I kept saying you know that I'll say pulmonary or whatever extra pulmonary he, he says there's a there's an m word 
That's it, Michael Bacchino. <laughs> I was surprised yeah. that he did that. No, it's very nice. I was, I was very actually nice. surprised that he did they that. They are very nice. They're not trying to fail us. They are not trying to fail us. They are trying to pass us. And, they, and they, yeah. there were others similarly, you know, when you give the answers and they know that you are on course, they actually can complete it for you. Surprisingly, they just, there was this um, um, about pain, you know, the pain pathway and then epidural. Uh, then they ask you what are the disadvantages, advantages and all that. And once I'm mentioning them, I think there was one I didn't mention. They said, oh, you know, the patient has to, to have right mental capacity. I say, yes, yes. So I was like, okay, that's kind, kind of surprising. <laughs> they try <laughs> to know. help you guys. So yeah. don't stress out about that. Yes, so, absolutely. Um, absolutely. I think you guys shouldn't worry too much. Just just go through the material. Get as much information. Go to the material. Dr. Arthik has got enough That's material there for you to, to fly through the exam. I'm telling you guys, go through the material. If you can join the crush course, please do. Uh, it's not, uh, it's, it's definitely enough, more than enough. But okay. you might need to revise it. As an old man like me, I had to revise it much more. <laughs> Than other people, but I think youngsters maybe three times okay. should be enough. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think we keep laughing at me. <laughs> you know, still stuck in our age. <laughs> All right. Okay. Anyway, um, it's been fun being here, though. But I, I have to run away. Though. <clears throat> yes. But thank I, you. Thank you, Dr. Monkoa. I'm allowed to. Okay. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Dr. Monkoa. Okay. And so, please, please help. Please help, um, like all the candidates, if they have any questions, okay, in the group, sure please, all of you are, all, all of you are, as you know, how the groups works, right? <clears throat> so it's, exactly. it is allowed exactly. to give all of them. You can give some answers. Yeah. I'm here to make yeah. the corrections as well. So it's free to give the, like the concepts of it, right? So please try to yeah. um, yes. give them some insights as well for the candidates as well, sure. okay? For all the yes, candidates, sure. please. Yes, I'll be requesting I because I know- I will put my number. Yes. Sure. Sorry, go ahead. Okay, so we so have I'm, another I'm one. That mm -hmm. I'm, I'm available. So once, yes. once anyone wants to reach out. And also, also to, please, uh, please try to help me of uh, conducting sure. some mocks as well. Okay, I'm on call, Dr. Zeet, whenever you have some time. Because, we'll try. <laughs> because <laughs> sure, I, sure, sure. I, I, I got so busy, you know, like the way I had yeah. to go through all I of know. those things. So please help me as yeah. well, whenever you can, you guys Definitely. can. Okay? Absolutely, Dr. Zeet, sure. Definitely, okay. definitely. And guys, please don't get stressed out about this exam. You guys will definitely get through. Uh, if I can, anyone can. That's my policy, to be Thank honest. Thank you. We have anyway, Dr. Papa. I will, I will well. put my details. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll just put my details in the group. Please feel free to contact me whenever you want. I will stop talking and I will slowly wind up from the group uh, <laughs> slowly. But yeah, I will be, you can always contact me. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Thank you, Dr. Thank Dr. Please tell Dr. Isra and Dr. Satar okay. also. Okay. 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 Thank, Dr. You. Thank you. We got Dr. Patel as well. Uh, Dr. Patel, can you hear me? Hello? Hello, doctor. Dr. Atik, uh, I'm not... Yeah, Dr. Um, D, Dr. Uh, Dinesh, yes, Dr. Dinesh, sorry. Yeah. Yes, go I'm, ahead, I'm, please. Yeah, hi. Hi, guys, I'm from Sri Lanka, and uh, I sat for my uh, Part B in London this time. So, uh, uh, actually, like... Just um, share, share your experience about the yeah, exam. I mean, yes. I was so freaked out uh, before the exam because uh, I was not very confident, and uh, I have followed the, the like, not every mock, but like a lot of the mocks, but still I was a bit scared to participate in those because um, I'm a person like who kind of like, you know, like if I, if I talk and if I get stuck, then I might feel uh, much less confidence. I only, I think I, I participated, like I, I actively spoke only in like two or three mocks, but, uh, and most of the time I was traveling while the uh, mocks were going on. So I, I, all, I, what I always did was I listened, I listened to everybody. Right. And, um, so uh, then uh, by the time of the exam, uh, like uh, I was freaked out basically, like, uh, and uh, I, I, I was worried about, it was my first time in UK and uh, I was worried about the language. I was uh, basically worried about everything because uh, my, I had one uh, examination like uh, uh, in my life earlier 
and it was kind of didn't go well actually so i was a bit scared of oskis also so but but i can tell you guys is like the the exam environment in london was very pleasant very nice like i mean they were they were really nice the examiners were like extremely nice and the people who were like helping you out they were extremely nice right so like uh, i had i had i was like the first batch i i got my exam on the fourth and that's also the morning session so uh, uh, i went there and it was cold and all that but like you know like small interaction and they verified us and then uh, basically exam started straight away so uh, uh, at the beginning like i was a bit uh, worried uh, like in the second station maybe i can't remember the stations now but in the second station i was i was a bit uh, you know bit stressed but the examiner was like then uh, you know like okay do you okay calm down you know like you know take a breather and you know like he was helping me out like that so i think the examiners and the the the, the how the exam is conducted is like very nice i mean they were like uh, i mean i was worried about the language i was i was worried about the accents the whether i understand them whether if they'll understand me but everything i think went quite well i mean uh, i'm so happy so at the end of the exam like i i i was not sure like if i did it okay or if i did it like i i i had no idea but i was so happy like it was a very good experience right so uh that was the the main thing i think about the exam i mean and and basically it was not very difficult i mean they don't ask all these uh, very tough difficult questions they always ask the basic stuff so so it's quite easy in that way and i think like you know like it's not very difficult to pass it's just that uh what what fails you maybe is like if you get like you know over excited if you get like uh, uh so i mean if you keep your cool i think i think that's the main thing to pass the exam and in the skills parts like i think more than the content i i feel this is what i feel i'm i'm not an expert i just got 240 something for the exam so i'm i'm not an expert right so uh it's just that i think uh, what they basically look is uh, how you talk to the patient how you how you like you know conduct yourself how like present and polite you are and you know like so stuff so um uh my and and the other thing was like my patho patho one of the patho stations was the actinomycosis one and that was the that was the station like i screwed up big time right i'm 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 100% sure i got maximum 5 marks in that station because uh, the marking sheet i could see that when when, when they were like when they, when that person was giving me marks i could literally see the marking sheet and uh, maximum i could have got is like 5 uh, uh, marks so i was quite worried that was my uh, probably 11th or 12th station and so that guy knew and he he, he basically at the end he told me like uh, doctor uh, good luck uh, in the uh, next stations right so but still like i could get through that means like uh, you can compensate with the other stations and uh, like uh, i mean if i got five marks for that station i mean maximum five marks for that station and then if still i could pass that means like you know you can compensate you can you know uh, score from your strengths and you know you might lose some uh, <clears throat> places if you are weak so that's totally fine right and the main thing was like i knew i screwed up but i'm so happy that i didn't carry it for the next stations because like i had like 1 2 3 4 about four or five stations left after that station but by that time like i just wanted to get done with it i mean i just wanted to finish it so i didn't care about anything so i just went in and i i i, I think i did it so uh exam itself i is don't worry guys i mean it's it's quite all right i mean it's nothing to be scared of i think so main thing is like don't be scared i mean i mean i was scared shitless but yes the main main problem is our stress it's our own enemy the stress is our own only enemy in the exam there's a I, problem i i was so sleep i had jet lag and everything but guys the i don't know i i can't i can't i don't know about the other stations but the london was like it was so relaxing it was so good it was like so nice experience even if i failed the exam like exam experience would have been much nice 
so that is that and uh like the about the the stations and all um mm, uh, what i can remember is like i got the ankle one uh, i re- i heard the other uh, the, the other doctors were uh, telling about i just asked him like you know do you mind uh, if you like if you can if, uh, if you uh, can walk about then he just put his step down and he was like oh then i said like, i'm sorry like you know uh, we don't have to do that you can just uh, you know we'll continue with the rest and i i I'm, i'll uh, I, i'll assure you that you know i won't hurt you more so something like that and you know then i continued and uh, the other examination i got was uh, respiratory i can't remember much about it and uh, history so i got uh, uh oh sorry mm. sorry sorry I, i nothing comes to my mind yeah the the procedures i got was the male catheterization and uh, uh, suturing so suturing there were no assistant so i had to do it the the first time i went in like my my like my forcep was not uh, functioning properly but i was scared to you know change it and do that i don't know and then i forgot the scissors so i had to like come in the middle and get the scissors so <laughs> i don't know and uh, but i think the the, the questions were all right and uh, it was all right but the catheterization i think like the uh, i i kind of forgot the the stem in the middle because the, the stem was a patient with the uh, uh, diarrhea and vomiting for some few days and uh, like the previous uh, doctor said like uh, they asked like you know like uh, like when you uh, put the catheter in like first they said okay urine come comes out so uh, then i Uh, injected the water and then i uh, connected the, the 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 bag and everything but then they questioned me like okay if if you don't get urine what do you do so i told the same things you know like you know i'll press the super pubic area and blah 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 and i flush i'll flush it and all that uh, so after that then said like you know like um, if there's still no urine uh, what you will do uh, i i think i'm not sure i think i i told them like you know like i'll get a gu opinion or something but what 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 worries me in the middle was like the patient suddenly told me like you know if you can have some water so at the moment like i was trying to uh, do the procedure so i was like uh, i i just politely asked him like uh, do you mind uh, if i get you some water after the procedure so i don't know whether whether like he was indicating that the patient was dehydrated or what but like i remembered it like couple of weeks later you know like i he, patient told me this and i all i did was like you know i asked him if i can uh, give him some water after the procedure is done so i don't know if i did it correct i mean i i i have just got uh, you know just ma- enough marks to pass the exam so uh, dr atik can i think uh, uh, advise more on that so what could have been done in in a case of like case like that so um, yes. and yes. uh, the end the end of the thing is uh, it doesn't matter like uh, if you had any bad stations or good stations the ultimate thing is you passed it right so that's that's a fantastic job you, you did <clears throat> like uh, it doesn't matter as you said yes you were correct like you can have like 5 or 10 in any station and it doesn't matter anything like if you can you can always cover it up right from the other stations yeah. So yes. yes that's that's the courage you need to have right yes. that's you the that's how you can think, over over overcome yeah. yeah yeah the communication also like i had the the, the blind man who wanted to uh, stop warfarin so like uh, when i just went in he started with something like uh, doctor i i i they say that you know like i had to be i had to be uh, on fasting for this much hours and blah 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 so i was like i was like i was not prepared for something like that i know it was uh, warfarin stoppage but then only i figured out you know like he's talking about the uh, the 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 operation and the operation needs to be on fasting then if he's fasting he can't take warfarin so something like that so i figured it out i think maybe a minute or later so i got stuck at the beginning a bit but then like i i i think i did well i mean uh then the patient itself he, he said like you know doctor thank you very much you know you explained everything to me and uh, uh, that was thank you so much and blah 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 so i was happy i was happy because like i it like i had about maybe more than 3 minutes left in that station but patient itself like he, he himself like he said this uh, like you know uh, thank you very much and he finished the conversation so and like almost all the stations like uh, not not uh, maybe the the examination ones the other most of the like anatomy pathology and most of the stuff 
like you have enough time i mean i was in the beginning i was kind of in a hurry because i was worried that i might miss some questions but by the end of the examination i figured you know like you know you have enough time you you can think you can take a step back you can think even the anatomy if you can't if it's difficult to identify you can think you can think and you can identify you have time because like almost all the stations in anatomy and all i had maybe three or more minutes left and like if you i mean honestly like i i i forgot tensor fascia lata right uh, they they asked me like uh, the 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 muscles uh, uh, attached to the the tibial tract so i said the the gluteus maximus then i i i said the tensor but the fascia lata didn't come to my mouth right so i was like tensor 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 and then nothing comes like it, it went blank then i said like can we skip the question then like we went on then suddenly i remembered then i asked them like you know can we go back to the previous question then he said what which question then i said uh, the attachments of the the tibial tract then he said okay tell me so i said uh, the gluteus maximus and the other one is uh, the tensor fascia lata then it was fine i mean um, so uh, i mean they, and when you give a correct answer i think they acknowledge you most of the time and um, uh, they don't want detailed answers they they are looking for a particular word most of the time so whenever the word comes out they like they are happy to give you marks so there like be no point of explaining most of the stuff so basically uh, you have to answer quite short and sweet is what i think so uh, what else and um, mm, what else what else what else the yeah the and i think the the the, the pathology station i got the actual mycosis they didn't repeat in other other days i think so that was only on the the first day i think so i think yeah, the actual mycosis uh, actual mycosis was a new station yeah and they i mean they, they, they dr atik they, they didn't uh, repeat that in the other days almost other yes. patients were repeat yes if i follow yes but I, uh they must have you know i mean everybody must have uh, got you know bad parts probably i don't know so, yes. lucky me <laughs> yeah so no, no, no. Uh, yeah and uh, yeah and about the the course i mean i have uh, not come across any other the free courses like this because honestly dr atik like you know like i i joined you like uh, maybe last month or two i'm not sure yes so, yes uh, and i'm sorry i didn't i didn't like you know subscribe you or this thing because uh, i was not i could basically afford no, it no at least uh, at least you you joined you you joined into the mocks yeah that's what right. so i mean nobody else did the mocks and the mocks were like you know i told you like i i was a bit scared to participate but i listened to most of the stuff and yes. whenever we have a question if we text or if we you know put in the group Uh, most of the time dr atik dr ezra or somebody else uh, would answer the question so that I, was a big yeah i 100% recommend anyone who is in this group to seriously join the crush course it's very very helpful you get all the information you need and you guys will fly with <laughs> saving <laughs> course i'm telling honestly yeah. seriously yeah. no 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 i'm being honest i i you know what i had thank to go you, back thank you so much the, remember one of the mocks where i messed up my uh, lumbar spine uh, injury Yes, I've never even fracture. seen that before, you know. Yes, yeah. Lumber so fracture, I mean, yes. these, this, this, yeah, yeah. I remember that. Come on, doctor. I'm being very honest. You guys, thank whoever, you, you. think twice. I mean, but please, please join because you will definitely benefit from it. Okay, guys. I'm going to take a leave now. Um, getting thank some guests over. Okay, okay. Thank you, guys. Okay. okay. Thank We've been touch. Okay. You. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Okay. Uh. Yeah. So. Um. So I think I think like if I if I had the access to if I had. were able to access the materials and stuff it would have been much easier for me because uh, i had to go through this and that and this and that uh, to get uh, i wish i uh, could have you know be able to have uh, the subscribe to the this thing but i mean now I, all good all in the past so uh, i have recommended few of my friends to join this course actually at the uh, moment because uh, i said like you know even even like you know i mean what what uh, what was most important for me was like uh, dr atik uh, you were conducting free mocks and free classes like almost every day i mean yes. you could really uh, you know put a price for everything but you didn't do that so i i respect you for that right thank you so, so much uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean that every other course was like so damn expensive, and uh, I had no chance. I had no chance of hands ons, and I had no chance of anything else. So this was the only basically like I have I had few discussion partners. I had I had some discussions with uh, Miten, and I had some discussions with uh, some of the uh, friends I uh, found through uh, the Facebook. I mean, guys, like uh, I mean, yes, you don't have to have a partner, but if you have a partner, it helps. It helps seriously because, like, it it keeps you going. And you, I mean, if uh, I had uh, one one uh, one friend from uh, UK, friend in the sense, I got to know him through Facebook. So I I found a friend from uh, UK uh, and one from uh, Pakistan, a girl from Pakistan, and another like meeting from uh, Kenya. So and I had another friend who was in uh, doing the exam from Sri Lanka. Unfortunately, he couldn't get through. But uh, yeah, so. It's good to have a partner because uh, examinations and like when you are trying something, uh, it's better if you have somebody else to you know show that somewhere you you know uh, get it wrong or somewhere you can do better. So I recommend if 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 you can find a partner, like he doesn't have to be a uh, a candidate exam candidate like any any person, uh, would be a, a better option. So and uh, even for the the uh, the the history takings and communications. You have to just practice, and the, for the communication, what I'd suggest is the body body language matters, right? So don't I mean yes, there are there are scripts in several notes. I mean there are so so many notes, talkies and uh, Bashid and um, Sala. Every everything is there. Like everybody has a you know the script, you know for the 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 communications and history takings. You get the idea of the script. Get the idea of the station, and be natural as much as possible. I mean, when you try to follow a script, when and the patient, the patient, the the actors, they don't follow the script; they change the script sometimes. So, like, you go in expecting something to be exact, the exactly this thing, but sometimes it's slightly different. So, basically, like what happened to me with the blind man, so often he started something with a you know fasting problem. Then I I found myself in a you know stuck a bit because my script was something else. So like that, but luckily I I. You know, I I managed to uh, turn it around and uh, get it into the correct track. So what I'm telling you is like, don't stick to a script. Get the idea. The the which what are the, like the points you have to convey to the patients are the same. Like you know, offering how the bridging done, how the what are the 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 how, like uh, how long it takes and uh, what are the 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 benefits, what are the disadvantages and uh, how it's done and how is the post of uh, the offering started. All that is the same. So, the but the how you present it and, and how it goes, the how the conversation goes, it ha- it should happen there like naturally. So, and you should lean forward uh, towards the patient and give him time to speak. And I think those things matter. I I I hope. I mean, I, I'm I think I have uh, scored in those uh, stations better because I I think so. So. Uh, that's basically uh, what I can tell you guys. I mean, uh, three, four months would be more than enough for the whole part B. And uh, it's not difficult. And it's not as tough as the people suggest. Yes, people fail. But because mostly due to the stress and they get over, uh, you know, like uh, excited and all those stuff. Otherwise, like this exam is completely doable. So, I mean, I was shit scared until uh, the results came out honestly but uh, you know like the exam itself is not very difficult the questions are not that difficult they ask the basic stuff and they are very nice so don't be scared just practice and uh, f- just follow one course i i recommend a dr atik's course definitely yeah. and you know don't go searching here and there and uh, this and that and uh, dr atik uh, the only thing like uh, i i will uh, you know contradict uh, from what i heard from you earlier was like uh, the the images you get in the anatomies i mean uh, it was uh, uh, this time it was quite different so uh, other than that like you know everything you said was like you know spot on i mean um, uh, the 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 thigh image i got was like uh, totally uh, i i was a bit baffled you know they are like i i, I couldn't orient myself uh, properly i think at the beginning so uh, other than that dr take like you know uh, you are doing a fantastic job and guys like don't be scared right and uh, you can do it i mean 
I I just got through. I mean, I I I don't have very high marks, but like you know, as Vin Diesel said in Fast and Furious, like you you win by a uh, inch or you win by a <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Have, no, thank you. Thank yeah. you, Dr. Dinesh. Excellent. Yes, the thing is, in yeah. uh, as we know, like um, the exam goes, right? The Because of the standard of the RCS, they try to give something new in each of the exams, yeah. mostly, mostly in the UK centers. So that's why they are starting yeah. to put some new figures in yeah. anatomy because in the anatomy, there are no new questions they can add, right? So they're trying to give some new pictures. <laughs> Questions were almost the same. It just yes. the, the images were. The images are you know, so, I, some sort of different. Yes, but but that's why I, we we trying like we're trying to go in a different way, right? That's why I'm trying to go okay. for a 3D modeling from my course, okay? Oh, so that you can have okay. some concepts like uh, like because they're changing. So that's why I, I wanted like for every candidate to go through the basics of it, the concepts of it, so that you you don't go buffled in your exam, right? Maybe maybe they can yeah. change, but if you have the three D image in your head, so that you can you can actually, go through anything. Yes, no, it was actually my fault because I I no, no, I, no, I it's like not my, your I, fault. It's not your no, 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 fault. No, no, no. What I'm saying is like I I like I I have been in the surgical field for like you know five yes. six years, so yes. I like I'm quite about my skills, but uh, yes. the knowledge part, I'm quite lazy. So yes. I, I just yes. want you know, <laughs> I don't go into deep. Uh, things in the knowledge, so I just want to, you know, uh, you know, scrape through it. So, like, you know, yes. so I didn't bother going into deep into the the images. You know, I just, you know, uh, thought, you know, okay, these are the these things, you know, I'm gonna get, and I didn't bother much. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. that I fought in that way. But you know, but I the the basic ideas, like you know, anatomy doesn't change, right? So, yes. I hope uh, I I I must have done something correct. So that's why I got through. So. <laughs> thank you very much, Dr. Ati. Thank you, thank uh, you, sorry. Dr. Dinesh, for your I, uh, for your uh, exactly. experience, for your sharing. Thank you so much. It means oh, a lot for me oh, and also the new candidates who are like um, thinking of giving their exams. They are thinking like what to do. Like it will give a lot of hopes for all the candidates, right? Because you were in that place a few months back, right? <laughs> so thank you so much uh, for that. Okay. No worries. Thank Guys, uh, I mean, Dr. Atik has my contact. Even if I won't be in the group, maybe uh, you guys like wanted to contact me. I'll, I'll be like, you know, I'll, I'll do whatever I can do, uh, do to help. Yes, anytime. yes. Please share. Please share in the group. Okay. If anyone has any right. doubts, any questions, please feel free to share. Share your thoughts. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Dinesh. Excellent right. um, you, ideas. Yes. I hope everyone got like so, so many insights from out of you. Doctor, we got last one. Like uh, Doctor Henry, can you please uh, unmute yourself and you can talk for uh, for a while for 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 all the candidates, please. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, so, so I'm Doctor Henry, and uh, I was lucky to pass the exam, and uh, I probably have just a few things to add to what Doctor Danisha said. Um, a little background on me, I was very scared of failing the exam because I don't have much of experience. Um, Post-graduation, I did internship and then only worked six months in critical care. So I'm not really so surgically inclined. Although I have the knowledge like in my head, but I've not been operating, so that was scary. In addition to that, I couldn't book courses. I didn't do any hands-on course at all. And so, but I was studying um, Pazi MRCS, Toki Note, and then um, one day I stumbled upon uh, Dr. Atik's um, uh, discussions, and it completely changed everything for me. Go one, it made me realize that one, I was studying the right things, and then two, some critical things that uh, look common, but are not so common, like um, communicating across to the patient and uh, how important the uh, materials, the one that the IMG note and uh, with that talk your salas notice same materials that um, has been um, also um, optimized by Dr. Artic. Okay, so how important those materials are. So I just focused more on it. And um, what I would say is for the knowledge section, um, what I think helped me a lot uh, was that um, apart from the fact that I had a good chunk of my part A knowledge with me and also studied the materials that the same that Dr. Tick has. I think he has made a hard copy of it, which will make it easier to study. Apart from studying that, uh, close to the exam, the week of my exam, I tried to go through 
some topics I feel must come out. For example, I felt I must get a topic in trauma. So three days to the exam, it's very few. I read all the trauma cases and then found some more critical cases like PUD, perforation and the rest and read through. And then of course, from the re rehearsal of that week, I got like two stations of critical care. And I picked the same way for pathology and for anatomy. So my point is no matter how much you read or how comfortable you feel, to make it very smooth on the day, if you have time, you can create into your schedule, revise the knowledge session very close to the exam again. Uh, the reason is I feel the knowledge sessions are very guaranteed marks. If the answer is A and you say A, you get the answer. If it is uh, accessory never and you say it, you get, you get the mark. And if you don't know it, uh, there is no way of um, getting the mark. So you just stand there and it can make you very nervous. So even though I focused on, I was scared of the skills, close to the exam, I realized I need to work on the knowledge. And I'm saying that because I don't want people to be little the knowledge session. So I did that and uh, it helped a lot because my first session was critical care session and something I had read like a night before. Did so well there. And then of course we boost my confidence for the rest of the station. So I think that's what I can say about knowledge and what is provided in the materials is enough definitely enough to pass the exam, the knowledge stations. Even if there are new stations, uh, if you really, really know the older ones very well, you may not need the new uh, questions to pass. You'll pass comfortably. So that's what I feel uh, about the knowledge uh, part of the MRCS. Uh, rehearse what is in the materials and uh, try to get as comfortable with it as you can. Use your background medical knowledge to, to be able to explain the concept, not just memorize them, understand the concepts so that under duress, under stress, you can still answer it. Uh, then uh, to the part that scared me the most because of my lack of experience, it is the skills. And uh, I think I've mentioned because I, I don't have experience so much in surgery. I was seated in a few cases that we do in my facility, but I'm not a trainee, surgical trainee. In addition, I couldn't book courses uh, because of some personal circumstances. So um, what I think helped me the most for skill, one is that uh, I did my best to understand the structure of the exam uh, upfront, what the exam requires. I understood that by, of course, watching almost all YouTube videos of MRCS Part B from everybody, so that I get a good picture and then study the right material. And then I started practicing. Dr. Danish mentioned that with a friend. I had nobody doing the exam close to me. So uh, a colleague, a doctor, so I just say, OK, let me practice. You time me. And then I go ahead and just mimic the exam. Hello, my name is this, and do everything and then see how long it took me to do it. What did I forget? I go back and rewrite the steps in my book. So I was doing all of this within the three to four weeks break I took from work close to the exam to focus on studying and practicing. So I did this until, um, and also kept joining a doctor at six um, free mocks, which is what I could attend then. And one of the day I was privileged to meet a friend who was also complaining about uh, being stressed about the exam not having a partner to practice with. So I chatted him up on Zoom meeting like this and uh, we were able to link up. So subsequently I went to the UK, met this friend and like for four days, we spent like six, seven hours together practicing the exam over and over, repeating it and emphasizing important things like, okay, you want to put the this into a patient? Have you told the patient I'm about to put it in my feel uncomfortable? Things that look like they're not important but are really very important. So I think the practice helped me, uh, the one I did on my friend, the one I did with the colleague who also sat the exam and thankfully passed, it helped me a lot. Then on the day of the exam, um, I, I realized that the exam is easy. Uh, on the day of the exam, I wasn't uh, worried that the exam was hard. The problem is that uh, uh, you need to hold your nerve. If you, if you get panicky, you will likely fail the exam, not because you don't know what to do. So myself, I had a very panicky station in my two history. But let's say the first history station, I, I wanted to present my case and I wanted to use my patient's name. I forgot the patient's name. And then instead of me to proceed and just present the summary, I was busy saying, no, I should have asked. You know, that kind of thing. Then until I realized, oh, this is my exam and I need to just re reconfigure myself immediately. So I just went ahead, asked the patient, what's your name again? He told me and I went ahead and presented. And of course, after every station, you want to dump whatever happened there behind you and move to the next one. So uh, basically, apart from minor things like this, um, uh, because of uh, being scared or panicking, I think it was a fair exam for me. And um, uh, there, are, there are times that you, make a, you have a mishap that may make you lose your control. You need to hold your ground. I think one of the stations, I had worn my glove before remembering that I should have opened my suture. 
And I had told the examiner that this glove is now sterile, even though it's on non stripe. So I look at the suture, I look at the examiner, we're just looking at ourselves. And I didn't want to touch the suture because I'm wearing a sterile glove already. At the point, I just told the examiner, I should have opened this glove as um, stuff first. He said, oh yeah, I'm going to open it for you. So the examiners are quite friendly. And if you are careful enough and not to commit some very big blunders, you should be fine. After the exam, I was worried that, I don't know how much of um, these little, little mistakes um, can cost me the exam. I didn't pull out my fully forward after, uh, backward after inserting. I remember later during the examination, uh, during the questions and through the exam, I should have pulled backward. They say, yeah, you should have. Those are little, little mistakes that I feel, um, even if I do the exam again, I may make the same mistake again under a very high tension atmosphere like that. So, but de uh, definitely if you have been practicing, bulk of the exam will look like another mock for you, which is what it looked for me. And uh, although I was worried about um, failing, it is because one, I can't tell how well others perform. Two, I have not done the exam before, my first experience, and everybody says it is um, difficult and little mistakes can cost you a lot. Um, when the result came out, I was I was very humbled. I had 271, which I find very humbling because I expected to do way worse than that. And what he has taught me, and that is what I will tell every candidate, is uh, if you studied right and prepared right, on that day, hold your nerves. Don't lose control. And if you do lose it at any point, regain it and just continue. Because more likely than not, you're going to pass. If you don't go blank, and they just stand there moping at the examiner, you are likely going to pass. If you don't do anything that is outrageously bad, you're likely going to pass. That's why you should study the materials, which is the same thing Dr. Atik provides. And if you practice, and uh, I think I'll just emphasize again, the, the, the communicating with patients, uh, apart from the fact that I learned he has a good mark, I think I'll use an example. I was very scared that I might get um, chest tube placement in my exam because I haven't passed one before. So I was very worried about that. My friend told me, I think he went for a course or so, that just getting the procedure right has just four marks. So if you've not done some of these things before, it doesn't really mean anything. Getting this right, getting the foliage right, getting the chest to right, it has just four marks. The rest of the marks are all those preliminary things like introduction, hand washing, questions you ask, communication with the patient, disposing your shafts, all those kind of extra things that you can do without having surgical experience, but that you will forget to do. If you don't know how important they are, you just go to the exam and say, let me pass the this, let me pass the this. So um, I, I think that it is important to code your nerves. It is important to communicate. And what our communication did for me that I want to emphasize is it made me feel in control in my clinical stations, especially examination stations. If you go over to examine the knee and you're not talking, and then you just keep touching, 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 uh, you don't know when uh, you have done the right thing, or even if you're doing the right thing, if the examiner saw you doing it, if he acknowledged it. So let's say you want to touch the fibula head during the exam and you are telling the, the patient, there is a bone here, I want to just feel the head to see if you feel any pain there. Of course, you are talking to the patient, but it's the examiner you are talking to. And that way, you are trying to optimize your mark by making sure that the examiner knows that you know the things to check for. Uh, so that is very important. And it, it just makes you feel in control of the exam, like you're the one running things. If you are talking every step of the way, I want to go through your, to your back now, and I'm going to take a look. I want to palpate this. I want to do that. As you're saying it, you're doing it. You're talking to the, to the patient. So that is one of the important things. The last thing I want to say is uh, uh, to emphasize on what Dr. Attic said about uh, don't stick to a script too much. In my abdominal exam station, I nearly did a Crips exam, okay? Because I got there to a diverticular, di I believe. I got there and uh, tried to touch the patient's abdomen. I said, pain. So I wanted to go ahead and be like, I'm going to, this patient is in pain. I can't continue with palpation and all. I want to do Crips uh, exam as a critically ill surgical patient. I was saved by the examiner because the examiner said, okay, that is fine, but this is um, an abdominal examination station. <laughs> So I had to reprogram myself immediately and focus. So, and the reason that happened to me is because I I was under tension and I felt that once I, I once I couldn't do an abdominal exam, uh, maybe because of pain, I should just go ahead and switch to script. I was working with a script in my head, uh, and it, that also that script thing also affected the my, what do you call it, now suturing station. I got there, I was expecting that, oh, I'm going to ask about lidocaine this, I'm going to gather my instrument, do this, do this. By God, they say everything is done, just start. 
So it took me a while to compose myself and really start because all the things, the preliminaries I had learned, I didn't learn that, oh, I can start in the middle. I don't necessarily have to start from the beginning to the end. Dr. Atik, during the mock session, we give you a comprehensive run through of what should, you should expect. But realize in the exam, some steps will be taken away. And if you are not aware of that, you'll be taken aback, thinking, uh, how, how am I going to start when I didn't do the beginnings, when they don't want you to do that? So uh, that is basically my experience. And uh, I feel that the exam is largely doable. It is a very, I feel it's a very easy exam but the emotional burden is very high. The emotional burden, you need to hold your nerves and after the exam, the cost implication and all of that will make you very worried too. So, but compared to part A, uh, part B is a very easy exam and it's very doable. Uh, all you need is to practice well and prepare right. If you prepare wrongly, uh, chances are that the person will fail, but it's not because you're not smart enough. It will maybe because you don't know the, the concept of the exam, which is why you're, you're here, of course. And uh, if there are questions, you can always ask uh, Dr. Atik. At some point, I wanted to join his crash course. I couldn't, but he still provided good guidance uh, by the free mocks. So that, that's largely my experience. I'm very humbled by my score. And uh, I've, I, it makes me feel that people can do this even without paid courses. And if you're not being paid courses, you have more reason to do better. You have more reason to do better. Um, uh, uh, Hands-ons are probably nice, but the same thing that Dr. Atik will emphasize is what Hanson will emphasize for you. And they will not do all the examinations in two days. So some people also, um, and I feel that's something I need to talk about. I didn't do that, but I feel that if you book a course, whether with Dr. Atik or any of these people, realize that that doesn't take the burden of the exam away from you. You are still the primary person that is going to practice and prepare and do this exam and pass it. Uh, they can only offer help. And if you book a hands-on and you push the weight of the exam to the hands-on that, okay, but after the hands-on, I'm going to be very good. And you stop practicing or you don't practice enough before the hands-on, which will be close to the exam. It might be a setup for disaster. That's what I feel. So uh, I think my experience largely makes me feel that uh, people who are sitting the exam should have hope like high hopes of passing, especially if you are going to London, the examiners are very nice. And they, as I said, if you don't make a outrageous mistake and you don't lose your nerve, they generally are nice to you. And uh, always remember that if you are stuck at the question, you should be very quick to say, can we skip this? I'll come back to it so that you can get other marks in front. And if you come back and you still cannot remember, like I couldn't remember cytokeratin for what do you call it, distinguishing um, epithelial tumor or whatever. Couldn't remember it. I came back after answering the rest of the question. I kept looking at the woman, kept saying H and E. She said, oh, I say H and E. At the point, I just gave up on that. But I knew I had done well in the station. Why? Because again, as I said, they come from the material, the same materials you have, the same that Dr. Atik has printed. I just needed to master it. So gather the free marks in the knowledge station. It cannot be the knowledge that will give you a problem. Just read it over and over again and read it again close to the exam. For the skills, Please start practicing, even if you're booking a course, start practicing as early as you can. Apart from Dr. Atik's mock, uh, I used to um, to join um, his mocks with Geeky Medics. And uh, there is a person on um, YouTube, I can't remember the name uh, very clearly anymore. So, but he has uh, videos on um, procedure stations for the MRCS, just good with about eight or seven videos. So. Each time we have a mock, uh, free mock with Dr. Atik, I go through that video, I go through Geeky Medic, then I come online. I may not contribute, but I watch what they do, and then I, I develop uh, a plan on how I want to do my exam, uh, how I want to do my procedural skills and all of that. And uh, largely it paid off, and I am I'm hoping that for the rest of you that will see the exam soon, uh, your efforts will pay off too. So I think this is it for me, uh, Dr. Atik. I hope thank, everyone- Thank you, me. thank you, thank you, Dr. Henry, excellent. Excellent. Thank you so much for your insights, for your experience sharing. I hope it will make other candidates to go through this exam. Okay. And it will make so much ease for all of those candidates as well. Okay. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Henry. So uh, what was your score uh, exactly? I had 271. Excellent. So I think, I think now, I, I think now I thought, I think, I, I thought like Dr. Amanko had the top score, and now I'm I'm thinking like from our group like you are the topper from the from the group. That's fantastic. So 271 is like like sick 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 for the second time. You know, you know like uh, for the previous one in previous exam in October, the topper was 271. Okay, uh, he was a very good friend of mine, oh, Dr. Wow. Ikena. 
he was a topper and i think like this time you are the topper as well from the london center and it's from second for the second time from the group wow. that's fantastic and that that will be so much that's inspiring hum- for the candidates excellent dr henry fantastic <laughs> no 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 thank you so much thank you so much for okay. sharing okay thank you thank you so much uh, yeah. Hindi. Yeah. So yeah, that's it. Like um, uh, we we had some experiences from our previous candidates and our previous uh, friends from the group mates as well. Some of them had our courses. Some of them just joined the free mocks. Some of them like only listened to the uh, mocks as well. And Alhamdulillah, they all passed. And I, of course, there are some people who didn't pass as well, uh, like because of few marks only. Okay, I'm I'm feeling sad for those people as well. There are a lot of uh, candidates who texted me like they failed in skill as well as in knowledge, like uh, for just for one or two marks or three marks just for that. So like for all of those, don't don't lose your hope. OK, uh, this this is just not the end of your life. We can regather and you have to go through again and inshallah you will pass in the next go. OK, and for the new candidates who are here. You will listen to all the candidates who passed with their excellent results, like almost like 266 to 268. And now Dr. Dr. Henry, 271, that's like excellent. And like, this is so, so like huge mark. Also, Dr. Dinesh, he said like, he was so confused. I like, and also he, he made a lot of mistakes, but at least he got like 246. That's like a lot of marks as well. Okay. so. All of you, congratulations uh, who, who passed. Alhamdulillah, thank you so much for joining. So now let's let's start our mock, okay? Thank you everyone for um, being here. And let's, let's start our uh, main mock now.